Hi everybody, this is Christine Clifton with Mindful Business Matters. How's everybody doing tonight? I am <clears throat> gifting you with a little teleclass tonight because I wanted to give you something. I was telling one of my clients um, last week that I was just feeling generous and I wanted to participate in the give and take of the universe and its abundance. So I wanted to do a teleclass just for you, my uh, You Don't Have to Shout to Stand Out group. So whether you're joining me live or whether you're joining me in the recording, um, I want to welcome you to this call. And as you all know, my book, You Don't Have to Shout to Stand Out. Hey, Alex, welcome. Thanks for saying hi. Uh, we're talking about 10 unique ways to network tonight. Um, and um, so a lot of what I'm talking about today has to be in, uh, in the networking, not has to be, but I've chosen it to be in a networking context. And um, a lot of us network, and we often think that networking is going to a networking event. Um, hey, Joe. Oh, I'm glad you're here, too. Yay, the time difference worked, I guess, for out in Ohio. Um, and so the one thing that people say to me is, Christine, you're a bit of an enigma because you teach your clients how to network, but you don't network. And I said, oh, but I do. I may not go to networking events very often, but I definitely network. And that's what I wanted to bring to you guys tonight was 10 unique ways to network that aren't going to a networking event, which is what most people think networking is. So what I also want to do before we get started, I have I have notes and things all over my table here, so I might be looking down from time to time, is that um, these little bookmarks that I had made for my book um, have a very succinct definition of networking on them. Now, the full definition is in the book, so you haven't bought the book yet. Go to noshoutstandout.com and buy the book, or you can search um, Amazon, obviously, for you don't have to shout to stand out, or search Amazon for me as the author. And I'm just going to read the succinct definition of networking. The cultivation of productive relationships for employment or business. So let me read that again. Networking is the cultivation of productive relationships for employment or business. Doesn't say anything about selling your stuff or selling yourself in that definition. Absolutely not. It doesn't say that. Does it say, go to a 300-person networking event? No, it doesn't say that, okay? Now, the name of the book is You Don't Have to Shout to Stand Out. And those of us who are really relational by nature, we don't love to sell ourselves. It feels icky or salesy. And so we tend to look for other ways to enhance our networking event attendance or to network in... Um, period, just to network. So I'm going to give you 10, count them, 10 ways <laughs> to network in a unique way. So you can write them down. Um, and um, if we want to dialogue in the Facebook group about details, then just let me know. We can, you can ask me questions either down below or we can dialogue in the Facebook group about these 10 different, these 10 unique ways to network. Okay, number one. Take a class. Take a class. Now, there's two facets to this one. Take a class where your colleagues are, okay? So let's say Joe, for example. Joe is looking for an IT position, and Joe could go take a class with other IT professionals who are already employed, right? So they're probably taking a skills class or something like that for IT professionals or Joe, maybe it's presentation skills class for IT professionals. But the people who are going to be there are going to be in your industry. They're likely going to be employed already. And you can network with other people in your field and possibly connect that way. Okay? Right? So, number one, take a class. Now, the second facet of that, number, of that tip is take a class where your target market is. So Alex um, 
does CPR on site for companies. So if Alex were to go take a class for business owners, then he's going to be meeting business owners there, okay? If he targets, let's say he probably targets fitness facilities or yoga studios, um, a lot of those places require their teachers to be certified in CPR. So if he were to go to a conference for holistic studios or yoga studios, he's going to be meeting yoga studio people there. So take a class or go to a conference where your target market is. Okay, that's number one in terms of unique ways to network. Okay, number two, reconnect with people one-on-one -on -one that you haven't talked to in a while. Now, this could be a list very, very long, but think about college friends. Um, if you went to a certificate class, you might have been in a certificate class with other people. Um, it might have been high school, high school reunion, um, those kinds of things. Think about places where you were intimate with a group of people and you've lost touch. You start reaching back out to them. And you know what a good way to do that is on LinkedIn. You can, you can check it out and uh, look for your connections on LinkedIn and just start looking for ways to connect with people. Now, you may want to, you may be asking, well, Christine, what do I say? Or when I reach out to them, what do I do? Now, we cover that in our challenge last month, um, but you also have the content of the book, okay? So the content of the book has exactly what to say, and there's a bonus in the book for a one-on-one -on -one tip. A one-on-one -on -one worksheet, fruitful one-on-one -on -one worksheet is, is a bonus you get when you access the bonuses on the back end of the book website. So for those of you who don't haven't bought the book yet, go to No Shout Stand Out, buy the book, and then follow the secret hidden URL to the book bonuses so that you can get um, that fruitful one-on-one -on -one, uh, worksheet. Okay, that's number two, which is reconnect with people that you used to be intimate with in smaller groups high school, college, certificate programs, maybe it was a course you took, okay? Number three, you know those groups you're in on Facebook that have promotional days? So they'll announce like Wednesday is promote yourself day and you don't wanna be icky or salesy. So what you do instead is on those days you say, hey, if anybody wants to have a get to know me chat, private message me, and I'd love to find out more about what it is you do and what you're looking for. That's it. You're not selling your stuff, but on those promotional days on Facebook, you're just going to post instead of promoting yourself. You're simply going to say, hey, if anybody wants to have a get to know me chat, private message me and we'll set something up. I'd like to get to know you better. Period. Done. Boom. Okay, that's it. I had one of those today. Now, I don't know if it will ever turn out into business for me or referrals for me, but you know what? I, I met a really cool person today uh, by doing that. And that's what I'm all about is connecting one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, number four, post something on your Facebook wall about your product or service. It might be an article and you ask for people's feedback as one example or you might post something about your industry and make a statement about your industry and then ask people to comment what they think about the article or whatever that you're posting. Your purpose is the call to action for people is to post below, you know, comment below your post. So ask them to comment so that you prompt that. Then what you do is as they're commenting, you comment back to them. You just comment back to them. This is a way to network. You say, wow, that's an interesting perspective, Joe. I didn't really think about it that way before. That's all you're doing. You don't have to sell. You don't have to promote yourself. And then somewhere when the, the post that you just put up dies down a little bit, it, you go in and comment and say, thanks everybody for participating. I happen to be an IT professional, in your case, Joe, looking for a position and you want to list your elevator pitch. If you know anybody, please let me know. 
This way you've provided value throughout the string of the conversation and then at the end you're simply saying, and hey, I'm looking, I'm in the market, okay? So that's number four. Number five, this is more aggressive, but it is possible. Create your own Facebook or LinkedIn group. Create your own Facebook or LinkedIn group. It could even be a meetup group if you know about meetup.com. Here's the thing that I found about us relational people. We would much rather host something than go to something, right? We'd rather be the host than the attendee. So leverage your strengths, people. Leverage your strengths. Host something. Host a virtual group on Facebook or LinkedIn or host an in-person group on Meetup, okay? Number six, nurture the people you already know. You know, when I do a talk and I say, raise your hand if I could call your mother right now and ask her what you did and she would be able to tell me exactly what it is that you do. Hardly any hands go up <laughs> because even our own family doesn't really know what it is that we do. You have the opportunity to nurture them, your friends, your family, and help them better understand what it is you do. So set up coffees with them or make phone calls to touch base or have a luncheon where you get two or three people together once a month. This is how you nurture those relationships that I said on the bookmark, cultivation of productive relationships. This is how you do it. Okay, that was number six, nurture the people you already know. Number seven, mail, snail mail. <laughs> snail mail prompts. I love note cards. Here's an example. These are note cards that I bought. Aren't See how pretty they are? Um, I usually buy one masculine style and one feminine style, and I'll send out a note card. It's really easy to track down people's mailing address today. So you go to their website or go to their LinkedIn page and you link through and you find out what their uh, mailing address is and then you send them a note card. And in the note card, you use the ask model, A-S-K. Where's the ask model? The ask model of conversation is in the book. So you go to the book and you write your note card using the ask model on the note card so that you can prompt a response from the person, okay? So number seven, snail mail. Now you can also, instead of note cards, you can send gifts. I love my send out cards account for that reason. Send out cards. If you wanna know more about it, just post below. Um, is a way to send cards and gifts really easily using the interwebs, but it gets sent directly to the person that you wanna send it to. I send gifts as thank yous for referrals or um, a little surprise gift for somebody who is in my networking uh, uh, network, you know, that did something for me or maybe somebody who hosted me as a speaker um, I'm sending them a little something through my send out cards account, okay? So number seven is send snail mail prompts um, as, a, as a unique way to network because you know what? You're gonna hear from the person when you send them a surprise card or a surprise gift. Okay, number eight. I feel like, um, I, feel like I am David Letterman doing the top 10. <laughs> um, <clears throat> number eight. Use your chamber listings, member listings, appropriately, okay? So you go to your chamber listing, you think about the types of people that you would want to collect in your network, and I'm gonna give you another tip around this later. But number eight is go to your chamber listing and use it appropriately. Now I'm gonna guarantee that you've bumped into somebody out networking at your chamber events that you keep saying, I need to call that person, I wanna call that person, so do it. Go to your chamber listing, look at aligned industries or aligned professionals or people that you bumped into and keep meaning to call and call or email them and reach out that way to connect with them. You know, 
you can always do virtual coffees. You don't have to do all in network, in person networking coffees. I do a networking stack on Monday afternoons um, that are virtual. So I block time on Monday afternoons just to be ready to capture people into my one on one virtually. If you want one of those, you can go to my website, which is chatwithchristine.com chatwithchristine.com, which takes you right into my online scheduler and you can book a time to chat with me, okay? So that's how I do it. I use Time Trade for virtual coffees or get to know you chats. And that makes it easy. I set Monday afternoons aside. I do client work or marketing if nobody books in with me. And if they do book in with me, I'm chatting away with them and I'm networking. I love, love, love that approach. Um, okay, so number eight, use your chamber listing to reach out to people like that, all right? Number nine, this is a really unique one. Use Google Alerts. Use Google Alerts. So inevitably, you've got people in your prospecting pipeline or you have people that are industry specific that you want to network through. One great way to reach out to them is to find articles of topics that either include their name or their company in or that are industry specific. So you go and you set up Google alerts where you put in keywords and then you tell Google to send you anytime those keywords show up or phrases show up on the interwebs, Google will send you emails with links to those articles. So it makes it really easy. You don't have to spend hours searching the interwebs for articles of interest. Then you send them off to those people you want to connect with and say, hey, John, I was thinking about you today. Here's an article on X, Y, or Z that I thought would interest you. Okay, that's another way to network. Now, to amp that up a little bit, I would love to say, hey, we should hop on the phone and chat. Because of course you know I'm all about the conversation. <laughs> but if that doesn't feel right, then just send the article. Because most people are soliciting them and it's unusual that they would actually get an article of interest with no salesy anything um, attached to it, okay? So number nine is Google Alerts. Here's the 10th item. You guys ready? This is big. I actually, I'm working with a client right now, Cheryl, um, on doing this. Create a resource directory. Create a resource directory. What does that mean, Christine? <laughs> so a resource directory is in your own world, what are the industries or positions that are around you that you would want to start joining forces with either as a strategic alliance or a uh, joint venture or a referral partner. So as an example, if I were a chiropractor and I were networking, I would want a yoga studio in my referral network. I'd actually want a couple of them. Um, another referral source that I would want would be an integrative medicine doctor or a DO or a nutritionist, or someone else who has to do with holistic health, maybe an energy practitioner. So as a chiropractor, in my mind, and probably on paper, I really want to be creating a resource directory. Because then when I network, and people ask you what you need right now, instead of saying, I need more patients, you can say, you know, I am building a resource referral directory and I am looking to meet yoga studio owners, Reiki practitioners, and nutritionists, just as one example. Now, people are like, wow, I know those people. I can connect you to people like that. And now you're networking. You're building a resource directory, but you're networking and you're creating a referral directory that you can use to serve your clients and quite honestly, the other people that you network with. So that's my number 10. I'm gonna run through them all really quickly because I see some other people have joined us. So while I do, if you wanna go and um, post any questions down below, um, let me run through my list of 10 really quickly. So number one, 
networking in unique ways is take a class. Number two, and if you want details, go back and listen to the front of this video, okay? Number two, reconnect with people from smaller networks um, that you have lost touch with. Number three, participate in the promotional days in your Facebook groups by posting an invitation for people to have a get to know you chat with you. Number four, post something on your Facebook wall that invites a dialogue. You ask people to comment on it below and then as they comment, um, comment back. So again, go back to earlier in the video and get the details around that. Number five, create your own Facebook or LinkedIn or meetup group. Okay, that's another unique way to network. Number six, Number six, nurture the people you already know. If your mother doesn't know what it is that you do, or by the way, your kids, if they don't know what it is that you do, then you have an opportunity to nurture your network so they know exactly what you do and what you need. Okay? Number seven, use mail prompts. Snail mail. Send things through snail mail to prompt a response. Number eight, Use your chamber directory wisely, um, meaning don't sell people. You're using it to connect to the right people for you. Number, ten, number nine, use Google Alerts. Again, go back in the video for the detail. Number 10, create a resource directory. All right, post below if you have questions. Now, earlier today, I promised that I was also going to give you a little bit about the truth behind manifesting what it is that you want. So I am going to give you a little bit of energetic tip as well around that. Okay, Joe has a question. I'm so excited. There's somebody out there who's alive and are, is listening to me tonight. Thank you, Joe. Which of the 10 networking options seem to be the most effective for those that want to work for someone else? Or what are the top three for that? So here's the deal, Joe. I'm not going to answer your question directly because that's not the best answer for you, actually. So Joe is looking for an IT job. He works for somebody else. Um, the majority of what I, everything that I listed will work for you. You're asking what is the best. The best answer is the one that is best aligned with you and who you are. Because here's the thing. I want you showing up comfortably so you show up confidently. So if large networking events aren't your thing, they're not mine. I am, though I'm very social, I'm an introvert and they completely drain me of my energy. I would much rather connect in smaller groups or one-on-one. -on -one. So the answer to your question, Joe, is the number one best way for you to uniquely network is to choose the one that feels the most aligned with your natural style. And that might be reaching out to people. Doesn't for one-on-ones. It doesn't mean you have to call them, okay? You can email them, but find the one that feels and resonates the best for you. Now, with that, you need to have a really succinct elevator pitch. You need to be able to say, "I'm looking to meet directors of IT departments in the financial services industry, like something like that, because people need to be able to picture who you want to be introduced to in their mind's eye. If you just say I'm an IT professional or I work in an IT department, they're not going to be able to help you. So when you have those one-on-ones, you want to be equipped with a succinct statement about who you are and the people you want to meet, and if there's a preferred industry or even location, maybe it's a town, okay, or a state or something like that, that's your radius. You need to give them something succinct. So instead of saying I'm an IT professional that's good at programming, okay, I'm just making this up, you want to say um, that I'm a loyal, um, a loyal and productive process improvement specialist in an IT department and I'm looking to meet the directors of information technology in financial planning or services firms. Who do you know? I would like that connection. Okay? So Joe says, thanks. I like how you turned that around. Great response. 
Great. I'm glad. It's actually a really good segue into the manifesting what it is that you want um, piece that I do. So um, here's the thing. This is to everybody, not just to Joe. If you don't know what it is that you want, you're not going to get it. If you're willing to take anything that comes, nothing is going to come. You have to be really clear about what is going to serve you the best. And you have to be really prepared with those little sound bites that can come out of your mouth in those conversations that will help others know what it is that you want, right? So those of you in job search, believe me, I feel for you. I used to be in HR, 11 years I was in HR. I knew then what the job market's like. It's even tougher today because everything's really sterile. I don't love that, but it's what you have to work with. So how do you desterilize? <laughs> how do you contaminate your job search? Um, you have to reach out individually to specific people and you have to have a clear, succinct message when you do so, so they know how to help you. You have to have your ask ready, A-S-K, right? You have to have your ask ready. So have those words really clear so you can say, I want to meet directors of information technology departments within financial services firms. Who do you know, right? That's who I want to meet. Now, if there's somebody in your area, if there's a financial planning firm or financial services firm in your area that you're targeting, then you say that firm, okay? So I'll just make something up. Like I'm looking to work in IT for Deloitte, okay? I'm just making that up. Um, that way people go, oh, my brother-in-law works for Deloitte, right? Automatically, people are starting to scan their brains to see how they can help you. But you have to ask for the help, which means you have to be creating a unique way to network that works for you. So you show up comfortable, number one, confidently, number second, number two, number second, what's that? <laughs> confidently. And then thirdly, you have to have your ask ready. And fourth, your ask has to be very specific so as to prompt a picture in the listener's mind about who you need to meet, okay? So how is that tied to manifesting what it is that you want? That's exactly how it's tied to it, right? We have to know what it is we want so we can articulate it to others and also we can avoid the bright shiny object syndrome that comes around when things start to distract us that are not what it is that we want, okay? So we have to be specific enough that we're really um, evoking a vibration of what it is that we want, right? We're picturing it, we can feel it. When you articulate what it is that you want, you're evoking into the universe a response. It's, the universe is a call and response system, okay? So whether you call it God, whether you call it universe, whether you call it, I don't know, higher power, whatever it is in your book, it's a call.